Welcome to the fifth episode of Holy Scripture Television. My name is Johan Oldenkamp and I am the presenter of Holy Science, uh, Holy Scripture TV. The subject of this fifth episode is nomo, and that's a Greek word meaning law. So we're going to talk about law in this episode. It is very important that you have seen the first, uh, the previous four episodes first, because um, this episode builds on those four previous episodes. In the first one, first episode, I explained the meaning of the name Israel, and I also explained the story of Jacob and Esau. In the second episode, I talked about Babylon, and that, of course, was a city in ancient times, in ancient Mesopotamia, but it's also a reference to a country in this day and age, in our time. And that country will get into a major war, that will be the Third World War, with the country of Magog. And that's explained in the third episode of Holy Scripture TV. And the previous one, the fourth episode, I talked about pistis. And that's a Greek word meaning faith. And in that, I also explained the true origin of Christianity, which is a little bit different than most people think. So if you've not seen these four, then put this video, you're watching now the fifth one on Nomo on pause, and make sure you have seen the previous episodes first before you continue watching this fifth one. The previous one, I asked you to give me half of the worth that it is worth to you of the video, but this time I'm not asking for money. This time I'm asking you to give that worth um, to other people. So, for instance, you think this is worth $10, this video, then I ask you to send a link to this video to at least 10 people. You can also send the link of the first episode on Israel, that's also good, or the link to the playlist, anything is good for you, but make sure that 10 new people learn about Holy Scripture TV so that they can find out the truth about Christianity and how they are um, misguided by it. I think it's very important in these end times that people know which is which. Okay, switch off my camera and let's have a start. In order to be in the book of life, or the book of the living, yeah, the life of the lamb that was slain since the founding of the world, as we saw in the previous episodes, if you want your name to be written in this book, then you have to do something. And what you have to do I already mentioned it, but I'm not going to explain it in full detail because that's also in the Holy Scripture. And that's what we find here in the Gospel. People say Gospel of Matthew, but actually Gospel comes from good spell. Yeah, so it's not a correct word, Gospel. It has to be good spell, and spell means a story. So it's the good story of Matthew, and the name Matthew also has meaning because it means a gift from God. So the correct interpretation of the, uh, the good spell of Matthew is the good news according to a gift from God. That's the correct interpretation of the title of, um, of this story, of this book. And when we go to chapter 19, verse 17, there we read, Moreover, he said to him, he is the one who is enlightened, and the him is the one who is not yet enlightened. And the, the not yet enlightened one asked the enlightened one um, about what is good. And then the enlightened one answers like this, Why do you ask me about what is good? Because you should know what is good, meaning the one is good. The one in the center of the whole of reality, in the middle circle, as I explained in the previous episode. That is good. What? God is good. And then he continues, the enlightened one, if moreover you desire to enter into life, keep the commandments. So that's the answer. 
if you want your name to be written in the book of life or the book of the living, then make sure that you keep the commandments. Because if you violate one of them, then your name is no longer there. That's the whole essence here. And what is that Ten Commandments, it's also known as the law, the law of Moses, but it's actually the law of Moses, because this word is in the Greek version, Moses, and it means literally drawn out. Yeah, people take it literal and they say he was drawn out from the river Nile, but the point is his name is actually a clue, and the clue is that it's a drawn out law. So it is written down. That's what it means. The law that has been written down. The written down law. These ten commandments. That's what we talk about here. So that is the law. Obey the law. Keep the law. This is the law. No more in Greek. And before we go to the ten commandments, we see first these two verses. And the Lord spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, whosoever leading you from the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. Well, Egypt is just a reference to living on this planet. Yeah, because that it was stationed, people were living there. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about the complete history here. I don't have time for that. Watch the video course, then you'll learn all about it. But the point is, if you are living on the land, yeah, on this planet, you can be in slavery unless you know the truth. Yeah, and this is what we find in Deuteronomy because this law is written twice. Yeah, the Ten Commandments we find twice. First in the book of Exodus in chapter 20 and secondly in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 5. And Deuteronomy means second law. So that's very correct. The second time we see this law is in this book. And the people who knew this, uh, that's, they gave therefore the name to this book because the main part of this book is the second, um, uh, second time they write down the law. That's why the name is there. Yeah, and actually the main part of the complete Old Testament, so all the books of the Old Testament, um, the main part is about these Ten Commandments. That is the law. And there we find more or less the same words. I, the Lord your God, leading you from the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. And then the first commandment starts. So what does it mean? It means that if you keep, your, keep these ten commandments, then you will set yourself free from sla slavery. Because there is no punishing and rewarding God. If you still think that, then you can better stop watching this video. The only one who is punishing and rewarding is yourself. You do the punishing and rewarding because the moment you violate one of these ten commandments, you punish yourself by removing your name from the book of the living with all the consequences. But the moment you keep these ten commandments and you live according to them, then your name is in that book. And also then you get all the consequences. So it's very simple actually. Either you serve the Lord, the one, you somehow obey um, the, the complete creation from the one. And if you do that, if you keep the Ten Commandments, then you only have one above you, which is the Lord. And if you do not, then you can have many above you. Yeah, for instance, the government can try to be above you. And most of the times the government succeeds in doing that because um, you are not in the Book of Living. So, if you're a debt, then yeah, you can be treated like a dead one. And then you can be fooled with the uh, man-made laws and so on. So it's up to you. Either serve the one true God or serve man or the son of man. Anything. First commandment. There shall not be to you other gods beside me. That's what we read in Exodus. Yeah, Exodus meaning going out, going out of the land of slavery. And in Deuteronomy we read, there shall not be to you other gods before my face. So here it says besides me, and here it says before my face. And sometimes there's an S as well, besides me. So 
What does it mean in positive words? Because I like to formulate it positively, not saying what you should not do, but say what you should do. And that is acknowledge God as the prime creator. Only when you acknowledge God as the prime creator, then you are uh, obeying this first commandment. And then your name can be in the book of living. Otherwise, you scrap your own name out of it. The second commandment, you shall not make to yourself an idolon. What means an idolon? It's a Greek word, and we have to find the precise meaning. The precise meaning means an unreal image, or a phantom, or an apparaton, apparition. So something which is not real. It might seem real, but it's not real. Now, what is real? Real is nature. If you think nature is not real, then you are delusional, and you can also better stop watching. So nature is real, and anything that tries to take the place of nature, that is an unreal image. So that's a violation. You cannot put something in, in the place of nature, and I call that anti-natural. So anti-natural is prohibited in the second commandment. And then it continues, nor any homoia, ah, homoia, sorry, my Greek is uh, horrible. And that means a likeness or a similitude, similitude or um, something made like something else. And something else is, of course, the nature. So something made like nature, but it is not nature. So it's anti-natural, made look like, in, like it is natural, but it is not. And of course, there are many examples in our current day life. But that's all prohibited uh, because of the second commandment. And what can we not copy, because that's what it's all about, illegally copying, it, it's about um, the ones that everything that is in the heaven upwards, or in the earth below, or in the waters underneath the earth. So these are three layers, I'll come back to that. But here, in Deuteronomy, we find a different word. We don't find the word idolon, yeah, what you see here, idolon, but we find this word, and that is glupton. And what does a glupton mean? That means a carving, or a sculpture, or a graven image. Yeah, most people use this word, a graven image. But it means the very same. So actually, it's a copy of something that was natural, but it is no longer natural. It now becomes anti-natural. And that is the image you cannot create. A graven image of nature. So, what does it say then? Thou shalt not make to yourself any unreal or carved or graven image, nor any apparition, nor any phantom, nor any likeness, nor any similitudes, nor anything made similarly of what? Of all in the heaven upwards, nor of all in the earth below, nor of all in the waters underneath the earth. So what does it mean? You cannot copy. Do not copy. God has the copyright on nature. Do not mess with nature. Period. And what do the last three mean? Well, up in the heaven means in the world of the spirit. Because the heaven is upwards, above us. So that's the world of the spirit. And the earth below, that is the world that we are living in with our physical body. <clears throat> so that's the world of the body. And then under the earth, we find the waters, and the waters refer to the subconsciousness or the soul. So that's what we find here. So this is the trinity of spirit, body, and soul. And we cannot copy anything from this trinity, because God created this trinity, and we should not mess with it. Simple. And positively, positively Formulated, it means respect God's creation. The creation of God should be respected. And when we do not respect it, then we violate the second commandment. And then it continues. Because you shall not have, you shall, you shall not do obeisance to them. Yeah? Don't worship it. Don't, don't um, give it honor nor shall you serve to them. For I am the Lord your God, a zealot God. And this word is mostly translated as jealous, but that's not what it says. Yeah, here you see the word. 
<coughs> and what is a zealot? Well, that's somebody who's working very, um, very hard, so to say, very fanatically. So that means it goes on for a long time. If you violate this second commandment, you not only this will not only have consequences for you, but also for your children, your grandchildren, and maybe even until your great grandchildren. That is how severe it is. Yeah, that's what it says here. Giving back sins, so the sins you commit, of fathers upon children. Yeah, so the parents give it to their children, and their children give it to their children, and even to their children, unto the third and fourth generation, to the ones detesting me. That's what it says literally. So if you detest the natural world, the creation of God, that bad, then this will have consequences for four generations. So that's very severe. But on the other hand, and having mercy to thousands loving me and guarding my commandments. So what do you want? Yeah, you want to receive the sins back, sins not only of you, but also of your forefathers. Or what do you want? On the other hand, receiving love. I mean mercy, if you love God. Make up your mind. Yeah, and here it says commandments. At least that's my translation, but the Greek word means prostagmata. And prostagmata means commands or commandments or precepts or instructions. So any of these words is good. Most people don't like the word commandments and commands. Well, see it as instructions or precepts. Yeah, if you follow them, then you have good consequences. If you do not follow them, you don't keep them, don't guard them, you have bad consequences. It's up to you. Then the third one, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. What does it mean, vain? It means that it has no point. It's ineffectual. It's unproductive. It has no end. Useless, idle, futile, fruitless, purposeless, yeah, or even pointless. Because if you do this, if you try to make God do something for you, which is in vain because God will not do that. You have to do it yourself, otherwise it will not happen. But if you try to do this, then you violate the third commandment. That's the big thing here. Do not make or ask God to do anything for you. If you pray and you ask of God, please God, buy me a Mercedes Benz because all my friends drive Porsche and I want to make amends. Well, in that case, you violate this third commandment. It's not only that, it's also if you ask anything, it doesn't really matter. The moment you ask God to do something for you, then you uh, violate this. Third command. Yeah, for the Lord shall not cleanse the one taking his name in vain. Yeah, your name will not be in the book if you do this. So what should you do? Positively formulated, develop your own creational skills. Make sure that you create. And that's, of course, the whole purpose of the Holy Science video course, enabling you to create your own reality by learning how it really works. But it's not a good idea to ask God to do it for you, because then you violate the third commandment, and your name is, again, no longer in the book of the living. Remember the day of the Sabbaton. That's the fourth one. Make it holy. And of course, I write holy with W and double L because it's about the whole. And what does this sabbaton mean? Well, it means literally week or weekly of the week. And what is the day of the week? Well, to me, the day of the week is the seventh day. Yeah, because the seventh day of the week is the day of completion. But if you read chapter one of Genesis carefully, you see that it's also day zero, the day before the creation started. And day zero is then the first one. So both the first and the last week, the last day of the week, are the day of God. Because the day means the level. Yeah, the alpha and the omega. Day zero and day seven. They both are the level of God. And you should make it holy. What does it mean? It means that you should make sure that you reach that seventh level, that seventh heaven. And then you become holy too. You become part of the whole. You get wholeness, consciousness. That's what it's all about. It has nothing to do with a literal day of the week. 
and that you cannot work on Sunday or Saturday or whatever. That's all complete and utter nonsense. This is about spiritual development all the way up to the seventh heaven of God. And keep the day of the Sabbaton, so keep the level of God, the highest level, make it holy in the way the Lord your God commanded you. That's the version we find in Deuteronomy. Yeah, there can be little difference between Exodus and Deuteronomy, but in general they very much agree. And the work, the Greek word for week is actually abdomas, but it's not in the New Testament. So the New Testament doesn't really care about the seven days of the week literally. It cares about the seven heavens of God. Yeah, the seven heavens of creation with the seven heaven of God at the top. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and make it holy. I use holy with W and double L, not with a single H with only an H and a single L, because that means something else. That means hallowed, and hallowed to me means ho made hollow. And that's holy. Holy is to me hollow. And I don't want to have anything to do with something that is hollow, because I want to make it whole, make it filled, not empty. Yeah, And hollow means the core is removed, and that's exactly what Christianity has done. It took out the core, it murdered the baby, and it somehow delivered the bath water to you. And most people fall for it. It's very, very dangerous for you because then your name is, of course, no longer in the book of the living. But those people, those, those Christians, they think they do a really good job. They go to the church, they sing, they think they do good, but they have no idea about what they're really doing. So the first commandment is make your way home. And home is the level of God, the seventh heaven. Make sure you come home from the perspective of God. Work your way up to the seventh heaven. That's the fourth one. And then it continues. Six days work. Yeah, that's the literal meaning here. Six days work. And you shall do all your work. Because it is indeed hard work to get there. Yeah, to step up every time to a higher level is a lot of work. It's spiritual development, and that's not going easy. I can tell you that. So you do have to do a lot of work. But when you arrive there, then there is no more work. Then the work is over. The work is done. Yeah. But the day of the seventh sabbata, now it's multiple. Yeah. So the seventh weekend, weeks, the seventh weeks, what does it mean? Yeah. It tries to tell you that it's not about a literal week. The seventh level. Yeah, that is the one of God. You shall, and that's why it's used in, in multiple here, because God is also seen as, um, as everything. So everything is, of course, multiple, but singular at the same time. It can be confusing. You shall not do on it any work. There is, there is no work to be done at the seventh heaven level. You and your son and your daughter and your manservant and your maidservant, your ox and your beast of burden, all your cattle and the Proselutos, that means the proselytes, yeah, the ones who um, um, re returned to the true uh, origin, to the true understanding, that's what it means. Yeah, converted, some people interpret it like that. But if you are a Christian, then it's about time that you become a proselyte because you went very far astray. Yeah, the one sojourning among you. That's what it says in Exodus and in Deuteronomy, it goes a little bit further. It says, so that should have made resting your manservant and your maidservant just as you. So it's a little bit extra, but it's all about there is no work done at the seventh heaven level. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all things in them and rested on the seventh day because of this, the Lord blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. That's what it says literally. So indeed, the seventh heaven, the seventh level, is the one that is sanctified. That's the holy level. And in Deuteronomy, we don't find this. We find something else to express why it is so important to go there. And you shall remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt. You were a slave. You had to work for others not for the one true God. 
And the Lord your God led you from there by a fortified hand and with a high arm. Yeah, that's a kind of reference to the Red Sea story. It doesn't really matter here. On account of this, the Lord your God gave these orders to you. So as for you to keep the day of the Sabbath on and make it holy. Yeah, it's just an extra, um, extra words to show how important this fourth commandment really is. And then the fifth one is about esteem your father and your mother in the way the Lord your God commanded you. That's only you find this extra only in Deuteronomy, not in Exodus. And then it continues that good should come to you and that the long time you may be upon the good earth. Now, the word good is only in Deuteronomy. In which the Lord God gives to you. Uh, sorry, the good, sorry, excuse me, the good is only here, only in Exodus. Yeah, the good, here says the good. Anyway, what the main question here is, of course, what is your father and what is your mother? And if you understand holy science, then you know that the father is your father who art in heaven, and the mother is your mother who art in earth. And the father, you are, the, your father who art in heaven, our father who art in heaven, that is of course the risen savior. And that is the son Helios, or you can also call it Jesus. Jesus is a personification of the son Helios. So the son, esteem your son and your planet, the planet you live upon. So esteem Helios and Terra. And if you do so, then you may live longer. Yeah, your days will be longer. You'll have longer time to live on this planet. So that's good. And of course, it's the good earth because it's part of the creation of God. It's good. God saw that it was good, so it's good. So honor the sun and the planet we live upon. There's a deeper meaning here as well, but I'm not explaining this here. If you want to see that, then do the video, of course. So esteem your father and your mother, honor the son Helios, and honor your mother Terra. Sixth one, yeah, the first five are actually about spiritual development. I'll explain that later on. But the next series of five, they're all about behaving socially to each other. And the first and most important one of the social rules is to not murder and does it only include people? Well, in my opinion, no. It, only, it also includes animals. So we should not murder any living creature on this planet, period. And if you do so, then your name is scrapped from the book of the living. Positively formulated respect life. No adultery. Another word which has been a lot of debate about but adultery, we have to go back to the original Greek word. And that is moi shoyis. And that means to impair the purity or to corrupt or to pervert. So we should not impair the purity. But the purity of what? It's the purity of ourselves. So the moment we do something that is impairing our own purity, we violate this seventh commandment. We transgress. Yeah, we corrupt ourselves. We prefer ourselves. That's what it's all about. And if you commit adultery and you are supposed not to do this, yeah, of course, that's a perversion of yourself. Simple. But it's not only that. It can be much more. Actually, treat others the way you want to be treated. Yeah, and do not do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. That's what it's all about. So behave correctly. Behave properly. That's what it's about. In Latin it says non musha berish. And it means no mongler, monglerization. Yeah, but it's actually all the same. It's no alterate, not alterate, al adulterate. Sorry, it's all difficult words for me. But it's all about yeah, the corruption and the perversion. So that's not a good idea. The moment you become corrupted or perverted or impaired in any way, then you violate this seventh commandment and your, book, your name is no longer in that book. 
The eighth one. No discussion here, not stealing. And what does stealing mean? Well, it means that you take something in your possession which was not yours. But it goes further, actually, the true meaning, because it means respect property, respect what is not yours, but is, is belongs to others. Treat it with respect. And of course, stealing is the most uh, harsh one, and then you completely disrespect the property of others and you consider it yours from that moment on. Well, that's a clear violation. But everything else, yeah, more mildly than stealing, also disrespecting property of others is also a violation of this eighth commandment. And the ninth one, you shall not witness falsely against your neighbor. And then it continues, here you see the word pseudo, pseudo witness. So fake witness, false witness. And that's not allowed. Positively formulated, it means speak the truth. And not only to your neighbor, but also to yourself. Speak always the truth. Be honest. And the tenth one, the last one, you shall not long for the wife of your neighbor. You shall not long for the house of your neighbor, nor his field, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his beast of burden, nor any of his beasts nor all other of your neighbor. Very long, it simply means do not long for what is not yours. Yeah, don't covet, don't yearn, don't lust after. Simply don't do that. Be content with what you have. And then you do not violate the Ten Commandments. At the moment you stop being discontented, well, it's a hard, it's, it's not a big violation, it's the smallest one of the ten, but it is still one. So your name is scrapped from the book too. Be content with what you have, period. Of course, you can create something new, but it starts with being content. So we have five yeah, spiritual precepts. These are about your own development, your spiritual development, in order to make your way home and home is clearly stated in the fourth one because home is the seventh heaven and the fourth fifth one actually says hurry up because honoring your mother means you step up to the second level from the bottom and honoring your father is already the fourth level from the bottom yeah i'll explain that in holy science video course too in full detail so hurry up go home and these ones are respect the whole creation including the stairway up to the seventh heaven and three is create your own skills develop them so these are spiritual and these ones the last five ones are social so respect the life all other life forms respect them behave properly don't do anything to others but you want them want others not to do to you respect property property of others and your own by the way too Speak the truth, do not lie, and be content. These are the ten. And if we only do these last five ones, yeah, then we are not in the book of living, but we don't have any trouble with each other. These last five commandments are the law for humanity to live socially. Simple. If none of us violate six up to ten, we don't have any problem with each other. We don't need all the man-made laws. We can throw them away. Actually, I go as far as saying that all man-made laws are a violation of the second commandment. But that's my interpretation. You don't have to go that far. But what I'm saying here is if everybody obeys 6 to 10, that we don't need any man-made law, period. Now we go to the New Testament again, because some people say there's a difference between the New and the Old. Well, then you don't have not done your homework good enough because the people who wrote the New Testament knew very well the true meaning of the Old Testament, very well. And that's what we find here, yeah, again in Matthew. The disciples ask, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And then the teacher, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
This is the great and first commandment. The second, moreover, is like it. You shall love the neighbor of you as yourself. That's the literal translation of what is here in Greek. On these two commandments, all the law hangs, and the prophets. Yeah, the prophets is a reference to all the books in the Old Testament from prophets. So this is the core, these two commandments. And this is, is this related with the Ten Commandments? Yes, it is, very clearly. Because the first five, we can summarize the first five by simply saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So love God completely. Love God wholly. This is the holy love of God. That's what you have to develop. That's the first five. And then the second five can indeed be summarized simply by saying, love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you love your neighbor, you will respect the life of your neighbor. You will behave properly towards your neighbor. You will respect the property of your neighbor. You will speak the truth to your neighbor and you will be content with what you have and you will not cover the possessions of your neighbor. So the people who wrote the New Testament, they are very clever. They knew all about this. They knew the truth. And that's why the Ten Commandments were summarized into these two commandments. So if you, it's too difficult for you to remember these ten, then simply remember these two. That's what it's all about. Thank you for watching this episode on Nomo the Law. If you want to yeah, stay updated on new developments, I'll switch on my camera, then make sure you subscribe. Yeah, simply click on subscribe under this video, or you can um, go to LinkedIn and you can search my name there and you can uh, connect with me, or you can go to Twitter by uh, following me, or there is a Facebook page, you can like it and then you also get updates. And of course, you can go with your own browser to either pateo.nl or holyscience.org. These are all ways to stay updated because I stopped pushing. If you want to know the truth, then you start pulling. That's the new philosophy now. For now, thank you very much for watching this. And remember, if this video was not worthless to you, then make sure you send the links to other people in accordance to the value that it has for you. If this is a value of, let's say, $20 to you, then make sure you send the link to this video or any Holy uh, Scripture TV video to at least 20 people. For now, namaste. Thank you very much.